Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Avon Valley Texas this morning. This is the Saturday Conversation, and I am absolutely delighted this morning to welcome my lovely friend, Ildi. Um, Ildi and I have known each other for how long? Oh, about four or five years, something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. We've been dancing together for that time, so that's how yeah. we met. We both attended a dance class together. And, uh, and we've been friends ever since. We, we try and catch up when we can, but we both have very flexible working. So that isn't always that good, is it? <laughs> It'll do. No, we we, we, we're not great, are we? We need to improve there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, well, I invite, so, so before we start, Ildi, just tell everyone a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um, so today, really, the Saturday yes. conversation is about exploring some of the other things that are out there that people um, feed into in their lives. So I'm really fascinated. I know um, I know you will be fascinated by what Ildi does. So off you go. <laughs> I <think> so. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. First of all, it's lovely to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. And um, thank you, listeners out there. I do hope that what I share today is going to be of benefit and starts a, a good conversation going. Um, so I'm a biofield psychologist. What that means is I use the human biofield to get uh, very effective results with clients across the globe. Um, the biofield is the energetic emanations from the, um, the functioning of our physical body because we run on energy. So um, you wouldn't have any thoughts if uh, it wasn't for energy because um, we have brain waves. So we've got the alpha, the beta, the delta, gamma brain waves. They are actually sine waves of energy. Um, uh, cells, the cells in your body, we have about three trillion cells. Each of them are able to convert energy through ATP, which is a chemical, either um, stored energy or actively released energy. Every single one of your cells can do that. Um, if you think about your muscles, the, the, why can you um, pull your arm up? It's because of tiny little um, electrical impulses in the muscles in your body, which actually allow your arm to come up. Um, so all of this energy that is the activation that is going on in your body all the time actually um, emanates out from your physical body in electromagnetic frequency bands of different um, uh, vibrations. So it actually stretches four meters outside of the physical body. Um, if anybody would like me to demonstrate by standing four meters away and pushing and uh, seeing somebody actually rock backwards and forwards, I've done that hundreds of times. Everybody has a biofield. It's what I call our bioenergetic birthright which we have forgotten about because um, the way that civilization has unfolded in the West, um, these things were not seen to be of any importance at all because the mind became very dominant. That's another conversation. So um, what I do is I use data. Uh, energy and light carries information as data, frequencies. And so um, my system, in my system, I can read that data, interpret it into, for instance, blocking beliefs, um, self-limiting behavior, um, negative emotional states like anxiety and fears um, and, and trauma from the past. And so what I'm able to do is very accurately read that data, apply it in particular um, techniques and switch off um, unhappiness effectively. That's what I do. I'm the the unhappiness eliminator, if you like, <laughs> through being a biofield psychologist. So that's me in a nutshell, what I actually do on a day-to-day -day basis, Jo. Um, you're, you have a, is it a nickname or is it a, a is it a, not a title, but you're known as the oh, quantum what I'm known wizard. As. Yeah. I'm known as the quantum wizard. I have been for many years now. Yeah, because I can walk through walls effectively. I can do things that other people seemingly can't. So um, I was given that title in an interview uh, in 2012 uh, on YouTube, which actually went around the globe. And this particular interview had 27,000 viewers at the time and subscribers. And it just 
basically went viral um, overnight. So, yes, uh, that's what I'm known as. Mm. And you've written a book, which is fascinating. I, I'm going to ask how a bit later how this kind of how this sits with the Christian faith, because we have the Ildi and I, we always have like the big topic conversations, don't we? we do. Um, yes. and, and that's why I think we get on because we can have yeah. these conversations about, you know, huge stuff, not kind of mundane yeah. day to day, but like the stuff that, that, that is out there and that is, is uh, impacting us at different mm -hmm. levels. We both have the, the, those thoughts or, or certainly those beliefs about the world. Well, so tell us about your book, if you don't mind. <laughs> I'd love to tell you about my book. My book is called Energy Aware, Live a Life of No Mistakes. Now, one of the things that causes so much unhappiness in our world is making mistakes. And um, the, uh, the, the word mistake in ancient Greek um, means, um, well, if you break it down, mistake. So you didn't hit your target the first time right so what do you do if you haven't hit the target you try again but unfortunately a lot of people end up in disempowering habits of making bad choices with relationships with career with friendship groups uh, with their health and on and on and on and so my book is about breaking that pattern and instead creating what I call bright choices the empowering cycle of making an aligned choice where everything is is aligned in your life with the choice that you're going to make and when that happens and you make that choice it opens up um, a massive arena of opportunities it's so powerful so i have written this book based on 24 energy principles now these principles are based on how energy works within us and within our environment um, the work that I have um, based it on actually came from quantum physics. So I have researched quantum physics and the laws of quantum physics and what um, Einstein um, and um, Tesla and all those um, scientists spent years of their life, uh, gave over their lives to research and understand is that um, the atoms and the, the particles that make up our physical realm can exist either as a particle or as a wave a wave frequency so that means there's a hidden world um underlying everything that we do every day and it's energetic so the 24 energy principles break down into personal energy principles i.e what you can do for yourself to make bright choices in your life and and um uh, align yourself, become balanced, um, have this equilibrium so that you can be um, flowing through your life. Uh, the second uh, section is relationship principles, which is how we interact with others and get the highest level of harmony within our relationships. And the third one is global energy principles, because believe it or not, there are powerful energy waves that underpin our globe um and um they uh, break down into light frequencies acoustic vibrations these all shape us and form us and we are probably the only species on this planet that doesn't use energy so i read the other day that foxes hunt by the magnetic um lines of the earth birds navigate by the magnetic lines of the earth we are practically unaware that that is even there but, uh, you know, animals and plants, actually, we're finding uh, now for billions of years have survived and thrived because of their awareness and use of energy. And we haven't. We've forgotten a long time ago that we have this incredible, vast um, resource that we basically are not using. So energy aware is about harnessing the hidden world your bioenergetic birthright to make sure that your life is aligned and that you are able to to thrive within your life that's what it really is about now do you know i think i i hope i'm gonna um i i i know that i'm I, well i know 
I'm pretty sure that I'm going to make a statement now that, that others may agree with. So lots of people say that about Christianity, that we've lost something mm -hmm. that was really fundamental to our culture. And, um, and in, you know, as time goes on, and as we become more disconnected with the Christian mm. message, um, that is having its own impact. What would you say to that? I'd say whichever way we look at it, we are disconnected in a very um, radical and dangerous way now. For me, it's about connecting back with the rhythms of our planet, because, you know, we talk, they're talking about sending people to Mars. The first thing I thought was, well, what about circadian rhythm? And what about the Schumann resonance of the earth that basically allows us to, to effectively live? I don't know whether you're aware, but every second around our globe, there are about a hundred um, lightning strikes. And the lightning strikes carry high frequency energy that has been linked to the possibility of the creation of life on our planet now. That's what scientists are now believing. So I think this disconnection through, well, technology, uh, you know, devices like um, our uh, laptops and phones are sending out frequencies that are disruptive to our physical bodies all the time. These are non-biologically friendly frequencies. So they're disrupting our brain waves. They are disrupting our DNA. They're disrupting our environment. Um, I believe that it, it, it's all the same thing. You know, there, there's been this, this disconnection. And whether um, you interpret it through Christianity or whether you interpret it through universal laws that keep us safe and keep us connected and thriving, I think, you know, in, in a way, the, the words on that level don't actually matter. What matters is what action are we going to take? Enough talking. There's been enough talking. And what has it um, resulted in? We have a massive garbage patch in the middle of our ocean that everybody has denied and ignored for decades and now is a massive problem. You know, I'm an action person. I, I don't want to talk about things anymore. I want to know what we're going to do to save ourselves and our planet. That's what's key now, really. And about connection, we have to re reconnect with all of these basic ways of living better. Yeah, it's very, uh, as I say, we, we use very much, and I've said this to LD privately, but I'm going to do it now publicly as well. I think Ildi and I use lots of uh, the same kind of language to describe yeah. um, what we do and where we view what we do within the grand scheme of things. But obviously there are going to be differences because we, we're coming from very different places. Um, now I know that, that Ildi has got some Christians who, who have sessions with her and various things. So what would yeah. you, how would you say, because I know that you are, um, can I say nominally a Catholic? <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> I was brought up in the Catholic religion. Yes. Okay. Um, so you Roman can tell Catholic. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what would, how would you say, if you were going to try and, try and put the two together, what would it look like? life retuning and christianity um, so to me it's the end result that counts how do i um what can i do to um increase the life quality of somebody else i'm not interested in the words i'm not interested in the conversation i'm interested in the end result i'm a re i'm a solution based person so to me it's semantics it it doesn't matter to me what it's called. It's irrelevant in that respect. I want to see the end result. And one of the things we were talking about this before, there is a lack of compassion that I find is endemic. And that is a big problem. We need to reconnect with our, our compassion, our empathy, our being able to walk in somebody else's shoes and understand what they're going through and be there for them and in fact there's there's this amazing um zulu greeting which is sour bona i see you 
And it doesn't just mean I see you as in we would say, oh, yeah, there you are. I see you. I see you. And in this moment, we have a perfect opportunity to enrich each other's lives. This has been granted to us. And even my ancestors are present in this moment as your ancestors are too. What can we do in this moment to create something incredible? And that really resonates with me. Do you know, that's, um, I just tried to kind of get, I just led an away day on Saturday, last Saturday. So this is this Saturday, but obviously yeah. for us it's Monday. <laughs> but yeah. um, I was, I just two days ago uh, led an away day. And that's what I was kind of trying to get to is how do we um, create positive interactions? Mm. Um, and, and sometimes I think almost, you know, we, we kind of, try too hard in some mm -hmm. of what we do we try too hard to do things in a certain way rather yeah. than just capturing as you say you articulated that really well um just capturing a moment and 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 kind of bathing in the privilege of that moment absolutely yeah absolutely that that's where the if you like the 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 um the miracle of life happens in that moment when you can make a choice and with that choice you either drop that moment and you don't do anything with it because you're so caught up in your own stuff or you do something that changes the world you know there's a man in india this is this is amazing there's a man in india who built a jungle in 40 years, every day, he would walk with plants um, and he would walk for several miles and put the plants into the soil. And he's done it for 40 years. There was nothing there when he started. Now it's full of tigers and elephants and other animals. Now that is one way of using that moment in the most amazing way. That's what we should be looking for. How can I use that moment to make a difference? a really massive difference yeah and can you see so Ildi and I on like on this particular topic we uh, totally speak the same language because we say yes let's make things count you know let's yeah. try and make our interactions count if we you know if if we know we've got the privilege of this time then let's make it count so there we're, we're completely singing from the same hymn sheet aren't we um yeah. So, yes, yeah, so I would, so I suppose my question is, if you, um, okay, let me see if I, if we can get there with this, but, but don't worry if we can't, it's fine. <laughs> uh, it might be impossible, but it's just something that I've thought of. So, um, as it, in Christianity, we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay, mm -hmm. where does energy fit there? everywhere it's it's all because everything is energy right. everything is energy so so it, it, so what's okay let me ask yeah. you this question what's bigger <laughs> god or energy it's the same thing oh, because right. energy is the life force energy is the life force so what do we see as divine surely it must be life force it's what makes us function and have a life yeah. and energy without energy there'd be nothing yeah absolutely nothing so it's the same thing, if you like. Mm. That's, uh, you know, as I say, I, I know that you have, um, you you work with and, and know lots of Christians, me being mm. one of those, and yeah. as well as, um, as well as non-Christian or, or people from all different, um, not just faith backgrounds, but cultural backgrounds. Indigenous, um, yeah. yeah, indigenous people as well, yeah. Um, is that a feature that you have on your page is it on facebook a feature yeah way? i thought you had some interviews oh yeah i've got i've got one interview with a maori elder yes and i have um i've done some other interviews which i've just got to uh process but another one is with a um i i don't use the word this is quite interesting um, I don't use the word Aboriginal anymore because a native of Australia explained to me that Aboriginal means non-original person. And that was given by the whites, the Westerners, to the people. So I won't use that word anymore because it's, it's, a, um, it's an insulting word for them. 
And so I will say native, indigenous native of Australia. So I've got another fascinating couple of interviews with this particular um, uh, indigenous um, leader. And um, I'm busy um, working on finding other um, indigenous communities that I can give a platform for their voices because of course there's a lot of intergenerational trauma because of what western countries did over the centuries with colonization and um, it's the wounds that they carry they haven't had an opportunity to express themselves because they don't trust us effectively I mean let's just be honest about it they don't trust the white person because we lie and we cheat and we exploit them and that's all they know so I'm offering um, a podcast show it's called Tribal Voices where I'm offering a platform a completely honest and neutral platform for them to explain about the ways that they live because we we've kind of come to a, a a crunch point especially with western thinking and they have been around for uh, thousands of years i mean the the natives of australia um have been there for at least forty thousand years so they've got to be doing something right um you know they they have amazing levels of wisdom and um so the tribal voices podcast show is all about giving them the opportunity my my guests the opportunity to share from their culture to help us and again i think this is uh well we've just done a whole um a whole module on this um and and had speakers from uh new zealand uh kenya nigeria yeah, but lots of different places yeah. so we've not just been reading mm -hmm. literature on mm -hmm. these issues for the church within these areas where there has been colonization yeah so as you say it's the um it's how because because we haven't really had the true narrative about all of those things that have happened no, and it's, it's just starting to come out now as you say That's um right. yeah. so it's it's very difficult because I think somewhere within our culture, in fact, if you are, I think I think I said this on something else, but I'm just going to say it again. If you are ever in Oxford, there is something called the Uncomfortable Tour of Oxford. And it um, shows you pretty much that the whole, you know, the vast majority of Oxford was built on colonial money. And, so um, probably yeah, yeah they, they actually go through and and um yeah. sort of explain where that came from and how it happened in the way that it did mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, absolutely fascinating tour highly mm. recommend it if you're not um mm. but i think that's that's it's very hard to heal that kind of deep hurt isn't it I think it comes from understanding each other, listening. I mean, deep listening, not just surface listening, really listening and taking time to understand what happened and what we can offer now. No, we can't go back in time and we can't slap that lot round the face and say you shouldn't do that or you shouldn't have done that. But what we can do is now we can make choices. Again, it's back to choices. What kind of empowering choice can you make to make sure that that healing takes place? Because things can heal, but it's all about intention, isn't it? It's all about what intention we actually carry. And sometimes just saying sorry is the first step. When a nation actually says sorry to the people that they exploited, that's a first step in the healing process. And these things need to take place. And, and um, I think, um, what, what would you say if I asked you about what's happening in the Ukraine now? What would be your thoughts there? What I would say, you see, my parents are both Hungarian and they came from the communist regime when the Russians uh, invaded Hungary. And so... Even I, when I went um, as, a, as a child, you know, I, I saw soldiers with Kalashnikovs. That was that was a common thing. So for a for an English child to go to a country, um, you know, eight years old, seeing a soldier with a Kalashnikov 
a weapon of of, of killing um you know that that was a real shock for me um it's a complicated historical and geopolitical situation i think we over um simplify it but we can't because unless you know the history of those peoples then to make any kind of comment or opinion about it is very difficult it's very challenging it's horrible what is happening now of course and our hearts go out to these poor people um, who have lost everything um, but what's happening is for instance the polish community um, in bournemouth uh, obviously rallied around straight away to raise funds and through my business organization i belong to a business organization called bni and um just through our chapter of about 15 people within five hours managed to raise raise 1200 pounds which we then went out two of us went out shopping we basically bought up, up boscombe and bournemouth um uh, buying sleeping bags um uh hot water bottles uh warm clothes you know all of that stuff and we had two carfuls that we delivered to uh, castle point because they had a lorry that they were taking over to poland to um go and help the refugees that are fleeing over the polish border from uk so i know quite a bit of the um communist regime um uh well challenging and um tyrannical way that people were living then so this has been bubbling under and um it's just it's it's that that part of the world you know there's always these um conflicts uh and have been going on for a long time well centuries so it's nothing new and i think we have to put it in context of everything else that uh has happened up to this point and all we can do is help these people as much as possible because obviously that is the hu human and compassionate thing to do um but getting involved in the the politics and um all of what is going on there i think having an opinion about it is a very difficult thing to do because unless you know if you don't know um then you can't have an opinion this is one thing i say you know if you don't know what you don't know you can't have an opinion about it because you've got nothing to go on and you know i see a lot of commentary and i think well okay but you're not there you haven't lived there for centuries you don't know what what it's all about so that's my take on it yeah and um culture culture is experienced by different by people in different ways but mm. also um as you say life experience within a culture obviously impacts yeah. everything as well um yeah. yeah i mean i think it's however whatever is reported to us it's never as straightforward as that of is of course it. not um, no so yes. it, it can be difficult to kind of discern Mm. what is actually going on one of the fascinating we've just been doing um studying leadership on my course and mm. um and someone gave us some statistics which i found unbelievable on how she was actually showing um how when we had a a, a group or, or if you like there was a time when a lot of um hong kong immigrants hong kongers came over to the uk mm. they were treated in the mass media much better than the um oh, let me think afghanis i'm sure it was that oh, yeah, um, yeah. and um yeah. and she was actually showing that there, there, there are stats to back this up mm. where different groups of either refugees or migrants are mm. spoken about in completely yeah. different ways yeah. and you kind of wonder yeah. where the agenda is there oh i think just follow the money it's simple yeah yeah yeah. really simple follow the money who's getting paid to say certain things i mean i don't i don't read the newspapers i haven't engaged in the news for well since 2004 mm. I, I literally just stopped um reading watching or listening to the news because i don't want to be told what i should be thinking by anybody i make up my own mind thank you very much um but if somebody's writing something and it's their 
opinion. It's their slant. I don't want to read that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, if I can't get the pure facts, then um, that's not going to be helpful for me reading somebody else's um, take on it, if you like. Um, but uh, yeah, apart from the last two years where obviously it was important to keep up to date with what was going on up until 2019, um, I just didn't uh, didn't do the news thing at all. Um, and I get my information from other um, other directions, should we put it that way? Yeah, yeah. It's been fascinating to talk to you, LD, today. Thank you so much. I have no idea how many minutes we've done. We might have done 40 minutes. I have no idea. But anyway, I'm going to stop us now because <laughs> I've got to go and get my yes. daughter as well. So um, okay. can I just, so can I just say, yes. do, do. so just coming back to my book, um, if anybody is interested, I've got the book on Amazon, but I also have um, signed copies at the moment. I've got physical books that I'm signing and sending out to people if you're interested I also have on Amazon the Kindle version and um, I have an audiobook version as well so please if you're interested obviously Joe is the person to uh, go to to find out um, the information but uh, yes so thank you so much for um, having me on um, this no conversation. problem at all. Really I've really enjoyed it. What I'd like too. to say as well is you're on, you are on social media, aren't you? Um, so you are. That's right. Yeah. So do you want yeah. to say about that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I'm on Facebook. Um, I've got uh, a, a group and a um, page, Energy Aware, Transcending Limitations, mm -hmm. and Energy Aware the Portal. That's the group. That's my sort of author group. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. If anybody wants to find me on LinkedIn, I'm under Ildeco Spinfisher. Um, I'm also on Instagram under Ildeco Spinfisher. Thank you so much, Ildi. And Thanks I look lot, forward Joe. to seeing you soon. <laughs> Absolutely. Sooner than we, we must do. We get better yes, at that. <laughs> we must do that, definitely. Take Thank care. You. Give everyone away. You too. Bye. Bye, everybody. Take care.